Hello everybody, Max Ponsonini speaking here. Um, I promised you that I was going to read a little bit more of my book and I'm going to do that today. I must say that I have chosen this part of the book to read today for, I think, for a very good reason. It's related to, obviously, practice, but related to times in our practice where we feel probably times like now. I'm sure I've covered this before a little bit. I'm sure I spoke about this. This is something that keeps occurring, keeps coming back, which is how to find inspiration, how to find motivation to practice. And I'm also sure that as soon as you hear this, you think, oh, this could relate to me because we all go through this. We all have moments of blissful energy and oh, I can see this in my class. I'm teaching a class sometimes and a person who last week or last month looked quite Uh, you know, not motivated. And then another day that person is full of energy, full of beans. And there's so many things that could that could be related to anything from um, sleep and diet to, you know, to emotions, to just a lack of enthusiasm. So there's so many things that are at play here. So part of a teacher's job, part of a master's job is to find out good common grounds that we can all flourish. You know, so it, it's not the necessary... The, from one-to-one -one personal saying, do this to your life. But finding those common grounds there seems that most people that have a think about these things can, can improve, can change, and can enjoy more wonderful moments. Uh, before I start reading, I just want to say again, thank you so much for your support. Um, you know, the message you sent to me, guys, this stuff is not trivial. This really helps me. As you know, what you're going to hear from What you're going to hear from me, uh, there'll be a lot of mistakes. There'll be lots of chop and change coming back to it. I might get started uh, because it's I'm writing in English. I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat just in case anybody did not hear my last uh, podcast. So this will all be changed by professionals who make a sound and look <laughs> at best as we can. Uh, so this is a very raw version, but I don't know. I feel like I have to read a little bit, put the videos out there. I'm receiving wonderful feedbacks and it's helping me to come back to this very hard discipline of writing, which is something I, you know, it wasn't part of my, my life really, to really sit down and write things and learn the craft of writing a little bit, at least enough to give a good um, uh, amount of information for someone else to, to, to turn into a, a beautiful book hopefully into a beautiful book. Okay, so, right, so I'm going to read for you guys. This is called Oplantiu, okay, so it's to do with harvesting. And here it goes. You plant the seed, you look after the crop, and you enjoy the fruit. It relates to the stages of mastery. It's a part of system that I have developed to help practitioner to identify where he or she may be in relation to their practice. A kind of timeline derived from those who, after many years of practice, can say something about the process of learning at different stages. If you practice capoeira for many years, then so much around you changes. Anything from the fact that we grow older to new technology. All of this can be taken into account, and many times this will help us to understand the process. Understand the This process is exactly what we need in order to keep valuable information nourishing us and also to get rid of those ideas that may bring unnecessary gravity to our practice. The tradition of the masters has in many ways given us this kind of wisdom. Yet again, we can see this in the way that they move, the songs that they sing, the way they teach, etc. However, sometimes we just need an honest conversation with ourselves on what we want and how to get it. Furthermore, there is another way to which you can add value to the responsibility of your practice. At any level, this can truly change your perspective and spark a new you in regards to your learning. I suppose that what I'm doing is giving you tools on how to learn. We focus on what to learn and sometimes we don't give tools on, to help us on the questions of how. Much, is, much giving up has happened from the part of those students that simply gave up because of lack of help in the how. 
This means that even if you have the enthusiasm to learn, if the tools are working against you, you may slow lose enthusiasm and your practice comes to a halt. The idea of the plantio requires some attention, precisely because they are so simple that it may escape the practitioner. At the very least, this concept can be used to indicate what stage you are, or better, in what stage you found yourself in. Here the question becomes relevant to the individual. You may be at the very start of your practice, and I mean truly at the beginning. You, perhaps it's your first year of practicing capoeira. Well, that is easy. You are on the planting stage. You are on the stage where the first seeds of knowledge are placed in your hands. Or you may be practicing for a very long time and you feel stuck. Well, that is not so easy, I'm afraid. When you think the answer was right there, one sentence behind, I may have given you a first hastir in this book. I have myself felt these falls before. I have felt the stuck phase. And this can be a blessing, can be precisely the blessing that you're waiting for or the curse that you have not expected. This may also be called the plateau phase. There is a great volume of literature on how to overcome the plateau phase. However, in Capoeira we're dealing with a very organic phenomenon. Since every game is different, the question is how to identify these phases. One thing is for sure, you are not as good as your last game. To have a bad timing game in the game of capoeira may be an indication of a lot of things, but is not necessarily an indication of your level. The idea that you play bad one game should not sabotage your integrity as a capoeirista and all the work that you have been doing. I am stressing this point a lot because I have seen great artists that cannot come out of a bad game and I spiral down of resentments to themselves a feeling that is probably the hardest to change. My tip here is watch the patterns. One bad day, one bad game, that's fine. To get one hastera, that's fine. To get many hasteras or to feel lost in many games, that's not fine. Patterns can teach us a lot. Take the example of injuries. You can pull a muscle or twist your foot and even if you may, and they may have no relation to nothing else, but at the at the time that you start to feel the same spot, the same pain, or the same muscle is injured again and again, then we realize that there is a pattern that we must address in a larger scale. Usually, with injury, we start to find the connections, the triggers. It could be the result of a bad posture for many years of sitting down in an office chair, or even the lack of quality breathing, or even more profoundly childhood traumas that much later reveal themselves as emotional patterns that then become pathological. In the case of these complex entanglements of emotional and physical injuries, we have entire academic studies that devote many years in medicine, physiotherapy, psychology. But what about capoeira? Well, the place of departure is your body, is to pay attention in and realizing the patterns. A diary must be, a, must, it must be an important tool for capoeirista. Whichever way you approach, whether you keep a full record of your training or you note only once a month when an injury occurs, a pen and paper is a must have. I have notes from my teenage years. And I surprised myself in, and I surprised myself in 2007, I discovered a very serious back spasm. I'm just going to pause there for a second. I'm just going to tell you this story. So um, I have some notes from teenage years. And in 2007, 2007, I hurt myself quite bad. I had a very serious back spasm that kept coming back, kept coming back. Uh, and I'll go back to the book now. And it was the notation from my teenage years that made me realize this pattern. I was able to go back in time and discover what moment and what movement, excuse me, what movement and how I was doing that movement. That movement became the villain of the story. A pattern was very clear 
and the pattern became a habit and the habit became a serious injury. With this knowledge, I was able to correct and practice the movement in a way that not only stopped hurting, but it was actually strengthening my body. So the injury became a blessing. But for that to happen, I had to understand the pattern. Otherwise, the injury would have stayed as a curse. This approach is, in my view, very much a capoeirista's way to turn bad to good, to flip negative to positive, to understand that in light of the immense benefits of a physical practice, there are some bumps on the way. I'm going to pause there. I'm just saying that, obviously, if we put it on a scale, the amount of benefits that we get from practicing something like capoeira, you know, physical practice, it's immense. But obviously there will be bumps, there will be some things that can set us back. It is the act of love to study your movement in a way that eventually you become wiser about yourself. Um, what I meant to say is, is actually an act of love to study your movements in a way that eventually will make you wiser. We begin by simply increasing our awareness. This is the first step. It may sound elusive, but it's just simply to steer the boat to a new direction. This can put a lot of perspective and give you a chance to see your practice from a different angle. He's also where a teacher can help you very much. We simply do not have enough time in life to learn everything by ourselves. And even if there is some grandiose meaning behind self-taught accomplishment, it does not mean too much, does, does not mean so much to me. To this day, I'm learning with not only my teacher, but with anyone who I can learn. It does require time and experience to develop an eye for it. But once you become aware, you become the ultimate student. You begin to plant the seeds in the best place and at the best times. I said it's not easy to understand, but that is precisely why we try. We get to work and become our very experiment, the scientist within, the Sherlock Holmes of your process. This is required as all the three stages can be indeed and many times are working together. If you become open to possibilities, you discover that constant and you discover this constant chronology of the now. Let me explain. In some areas you are beginning, in others you are advanced, in others you are a master, and in, order, in other areas you might be completely unaware of what you need to do. And what is even more exciting is that the times that you are in the don't yet know, the times of un unaware, this is the best phase to be. This is, this is exhilarating. The word of the unknown is part of what we call ashe. Here, I do not stand as an expert of this profound word, ashe. Neither I will give you a dictionary translation. Ashe is, I'm afraid, to say something that makes more sense when you feel for yourself. Remember that I said we don't have time to learn everything by, by ourselves, but there are things that we can only learn or better feel within us. I will, however, suggest many ways to many ways that can that we can approach a share giving you some diagnosis but not necessarily the remedy in relation to my scheme of three to ask question is a good way to start planting the seed is the initial stage of an idea a desire or a desire you have planted the seed of curiosity by picking up this book now if you look after the idea presented here by practicing you can eventually enjoy its fruits. It is the simplicity that makes it work. You may have just planted the seed that was needed in your practice. Stage two is at first sight the longest one, but that is only because it's the stage that requires more effort. And constant effort can be taunting. To look after the crop is to learn about your crop, the soil, the weather, the seasons, the necessary tools for harvesting, the right time to water the pasture, and the right way to fight pests that could ruin your work, to focus on the growth and to take pride in each stage of the crop, to take pride, sorry, in each stage of the crop. 
not only when it's ready to eat, but the slow process of nourishing and to deepen the analogy, to start from the ground, from its roots. Sorry, you might hear some outside noise here, but I'm just, quick, I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> this is the time to ask questions, to investigate, to analyze. This is the time to add value to the forms, and I mean the forms of movements. As you shift the focus to the things and less on yourself, paradoxically, the energy gets rebuilt in your body and allow you and allow new energy to move to your practice. So I think that's an important point there that I think a lot of times if we focus less on ourselves in terms of the idea of self, but more in the things themselves, that paradoxically that's better for us. Stage two is ultimately to fall in love and make your vows. Here, we also apply an important point, narrow training. That's it. I believe very much in this. Open mind, but narrow training. Borrowing from my early statement that there is no time to learn all by yourself, we also don't have time to learn everything at once. We don't even have time to learn everything. Mess Pastini spoke about this beautifully. Sorcery of slaves, longing for liberty, its beginning has no method and its end it's inconceivable to the wisest capurista, Mestre Pastini. End quote. The stage of looking after your crop can be immensely supported by your teacher or teachers and furthermore your friends. Every hoda is an opportunity to learn. It is just about the focused mind. If you recognize that you need even a little bit of this stage too, then you are, at least for a period of time, you will approach the hoda with a different eye. The issue that we have is that until we ask ourselves where we are, or even consider taking matters of mastery further, we are oblivious to so much knowledge around us. Knowledge that can work in your favor. The what to do and the what not to do. To open your eyes, you must first look inwards. Stage 3. Enjoy the fruit. So much work and effort must have its rewards. And here is where stage 3 shows its importance. I have seen practitioners who actually struggle to enjoy the work that they create, sometimes confusing the idea of celebration with lack of humility, or if somehow to celebrate is to lose what you have built. Good old-fashioned common sense is important, of course. And even as I fall in the scenes of generalization, I can say that to celebrate is a vital part of this art. It is not frivolous. It is a direct inheritance of culture. And in some ways, it is coach itself. Here we face another paradox, the celebration and vitality of the culture and the arduous work of physical practice. Capoeira is the wisdom that navigates fluently between these two extremes. That is indeed a big statement to make, and I am here to defend it. If there is one part of capoeira, at least as a folklore, dance and culture manifestation that, we can, that can be affirmed with great level of security, is that this is a culture of celebration. And even more, it is a form of cultural resistance. Therefore, we can conclude on historical grounds, resistance in order to achieve or exercise freedom of happiness, freedom and happiness. This is where, we, this is where efforts of interactions come together. We sing together, move and practice together. And there you see again, three points of connection. If you have been practicing capoeira for some time, you know that these two worlds walk together. There is pleasure in practicing, but there is also so much joy at the end of a hardcore class. Or as I joke with my students, first they complain that it's too hard. Once they see that I will persist in the hard class, they accept. Then the magic happens. They ask me for more. So, complain or reject, get on with it, acceptance, then improvement, the feeling of more please. When I teach a hard class, sometimes I see some angry faces. And then I remember the wise words of my grandmother when I, whenever I did not want to do my chores. Get on with it, as I'm not scared of angry faces. 
In another way, what I'm saying is that hard work will have its rewards, especially if responsibility was your currency. I have used this scheme in some important times in my career. Once I began more conscious of them, once I become to be more conscious of them, I could see the three, I could see times where I was not putting the work in as much as I was expecting to be celebrated or as much as I was expecting to enjoy. I could also clearly see when I was, when so much practice was done, diligently practiced, paying attention to the ways of the warrior, carefully crafting the teacher persona, looking after my practice, looking after my students, looking for ways to PhD myself into the knowledge, and yet negating beautiful moments of recognition from others. Negate not only in ceremonial, but in my heart, forgetting that at many occasions my rewards could also be a point of inspiration and departure for someone else's journey. I fail to realize that Heartfelt gifts sometimes represented precisely how we impact each other's lives. Take time to celebrate. It may be simply you telling yourself that the work is great and you have, then you feel honored for the efforts of those around you and obviously your own efforts. Or it may be where you decide to practice, to, to devote your practice to someone else. A way to celebrate capoeira is to feel more compassionate toward others. Messi João Grande told me that great capoeiristas should not mistreat others. Sometimes I am reminded of this wisdom in places where I feel mistreated and of course in times where I mistreated someone else. And the more I think, the more I realize he's right. The act of empowering someone else is a form of celebration or at least it is something to celebrate. Or even... Perhaps, if you find that it's all very hard to externalize, begin by celebrating others around you. It is usually reciprocated to so much happiness. Capoeira also has times that allow all these three stages to come together. When you travel and visit other hodas, workshops, it is, a very healthy, it is very healthy for capoeirista. And one way to say it is vital for capoeirista. To expand and challenge yourself, everybody benefits from it. You, your school, your teachers, your friends, the art itself. One of Capoeira's most shared wisdom is, go and see for yourself. Take what is good for you and leave what is not good behind. I have learned this with my mastery and whenever my students travel, I want to pass the same wisdom. It is so simple, but so true. Here's a story of one night that changed my life. The year was 1992, and it was my first three nights away in an event. Okay, so guys, I'm going to stop here now. I know you're thinking, no, don't stop. You're telling a story. But um, obviously, <laughs> I am trying to also make this book happen in, and as a book. Not, I'm going to read every chapter of the book on, um, on the internet. But... Basically, obviously, this chapter is about recognizing stages. Now, uh, there's more to it because it actually starts much earlier. The chapter starts much earlier. I, I started from uh, um, later. In, I started by talking about the, the three stages, but it goes before that. And I explained before that, I explained a little bit about the, actually the systems. How, how can we realize what stage we are and how can we understand that? Now, of course, all these three stages of planting the seed, looking after the crop, and then enjoying the fruit, they are together somehow. But sometimes it's just putting some focus. Right now, I am in a stage of looking after my crop. You know, that is also in many ways, metaphorically speaking, planting new seeds. But nevertheless, I'm enjoying the classes. I'm enjoying so much the class, but I'm not enjoying that social side I'm not enjoying because I'm not together with people. We are not doing events and hodders and singing together and, you know, playing instruments next to each other. So I am devoting even more to the crop time where I'm looking after, I'm preparing the soil, you know, getting better tools. These are just such an important concept for me is to improve the tools. As I said in the beginning, you may be enthusiastic. How, this could be a game changer because you, you can have great enthusiasm, yet the tools are not sharp enough or you don't have enough support and then you lose enthusiasm. 
So in many ways, that is a sabotage because it's not you. You may be really willing to learn, but you just need some better tools. A lot of times, I'm not taking responsibility away from, from you. I'm not taking responsibility away from us. But sometimes, it's not our fault that we lose enthusiasm. It could be lack of knowledge around. Now, it is our fault if we don't look for it. That, that's true, because now there's so much that we can do. We can do classes, we can practice, we can read, we can get inspired, and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, make your notes and please, please leave me some comments. It really helps. I should come back with a little bit more sometimes and um, I'll keep writing. You can, you can probably um, expect another chapter maybe in a couple of weeks. Okay? Obrigado. Have a wonderful week, guys. Take care.